the essence of God's wrath. Colossians 3, 6. The essence of God's wrath is to break disobedience out of you. To break disobedience. Some of you have been struggling with the same sin for 10 years. I'm struggling with masturbation for 10 years. Okay. Because you don't know the fear of God. When he hits you, you will leave it. I'm struggling with fornication for 14 years. Okay. Be struggling there because you only know grace. When terror hits you, you will, you will see the lady, you will pee in your pants. And leave me alone. You will run. The reason you are still falling into it and coming to say sorry is because you are still joking with God. You have not hit the terror. You do it and say sorry. 14 years, the same sin. You do it and say sorry. 14 years, the same sin. You do it and say sorry. You do it and say sorry because you know that you can only come and say sorry. When you experience the terror of the Lord, you will not say sorry anymore. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The wrath of God. So this is now super judgment. This is not self-judgment, authority judgment, or heaven council judgment. It is Father himself judging you. You know what is right, you don't want to do it. You're giving excuses and coming to beg every day. There's grace, yes. When you go to some level, some things have exceeded grace in your life. You're in your life, no more grace there. You got grace on a baby when he pulls on, on, the, on the diaper. You know, it's a, there's grace. You don't, you don't get angry with a child, he's just six months old. It's normal. There's grace. Eight months, it's okay to wee in your diaper. Two years, three years, four years, five years. He says, okay. Not me, six years. I wee my diaper. Okay, come, let's go. And change. No, 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 you take a whip. No more. You are bigger than this now. That's what it means. God says, you can't do this. You can't be struggling with your tight at this level. You've known too much. You can't be struggling with lying. You can't be struggling with deceit anymore. You can't be carrying hatred in your heart. You have known too much. And that's the reason why a lot of you now will get into trouble. Because in this place, God has taught you deep things. You have received the mysteries of heaven that have been witnessed by the councils of God. They've watched you. They've recorded it that this church is now matured enough for judgment. God, they've heard all kinds of teaching. They've been taught and they've been trained. But now they are going to go into judgment because no church has received that level of diversity of truth like you have received. No church that I know. There may be churches I don't know. But no church that I know has received the variety is it holiness? Is it faith? Is it miracles? Is it supernatural? Is it the prophetic? You've seen all. There's nothing you see. You say, hey, I've not seen this before. It's not, it's not you. Not you. That's why judgment is coming to you. Because you've known too much and you have not used it. For which sin's sake, the wrath of God coming on the children of disobedience. What brings the wrath of God? Disobedience. Seven sins of disobedience. What has God told you that you know? If they ask you now, did God tell you this thing? You cannot deny that. No, he didn't tell me. You know, but you are not living in line with what you know. That was called disobedience. You cannot be disobedient, disobedient without knowledge. That means you know that God doesn't want me to do this anymore. God doesn't want me to say this anymore. God doesn't want me to do this. And you are still doing it. It's called disobedience. So let's look at it. Seven sins of disobedience. Number one, hopelessness. Hopelessness is faithlessness that leads to disobedience. God says, go and get a job. Nobody will give me a job. I don't think anybody can give me a job. I don't think anybody wants to give me a job. So you are hopeless. So you are faithless. Remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. You can't have faith without hope. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. That means you've got hope first before you have faith. So when God tells you something, he said, the word, your word unto me through which you have caused your servant to hope. He said, thy word unto me through which thou hast caused thy servants to hope. Psalm 119. So the word God speaks to you ought to make you hope. Hope ought to make you have faith. Look at it. Remember thy word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. So the word of God to you ought to give you hope. Hebrews 11.1, 1, what does hope do? Hope, faith, is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So the word gives you hope, hope gives you faith. 
where you choose to be hopeless where God has given you his word, you have terminated the word, you have made the word of God of no effect by your tradition. So when God has already told you, I'm going to make a way, you say, there's no need to go, there will be no way. But God said, I'm going to make a way. You have to hope in that word. But you decided to be hopeless against the word. What does that mean? It makes you faithless. What does that mean? Faith is an action. You are supposed to go there. You say, I will not go. They will not listen to me. Moses committed that sin. And God was angry with him. Remember what the Bible says. God was angry with Moses. Why? They will not listen. They will not listen. They will not listen. God has already said, go. I'll put my word in your mouth. They will not listen. So you are deciding to be hopeless in the midst of the word. What's the result? Faithlessness. What's the result? Disobedience. Because you will not do what God has told you to do because you lack hope. It's a scene of disobedience. Number one, hopelessness. Number two, doubt. Making God a liar. God has said, and you say, no, God is a liar. First John 5 verse 10. When you make God a liar, you disobey. He that believeth on the Son of God had the witness in himself. He that believeth not God had made him a liar because he believeth not the record. Some of you, a vision will come. You say, hmm, not this vision. Maybe they are planning it. You are bringing a curse on yourself. You are bringing a curse on yourself because you choose not to believe. When you don't believe, you make God a liar. When you make God a liar, you will never be able to align yourself in obedience because you will not follow where you doubt. You will not follow what you doubt. Move for me because of time. The sin of doubt, sin of hopelessness, number one, doubt, number two, rebellion. Choosing your own way, disobeying his will. You know what God has said and you say yes, yes, yes. Then you turn and say, no, I'm, not, I'm going to do my own. You are rebellious. Remember that scene. We'll come back to read the scripture when we're in number seven. Rebellion. It's a very bad thing. See, as the Lord had great delight in both offering. And sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hacking than the fat of rams. Move for me. Number four. Because of time, I'm going to reiterate this again. Fear. Fear of man. Fear of Satan. I don't want them to come and do something to me. So they said we should sacrifice ram. So I went to the village to sacrifice ram. Fear of, fear of demons. Fear of man. I don't want my boss to fire me also. That's why I always go to sleep with him. You know, so that he will not fire me. Fear of man. Obeying man over God. Proverbs 29, 25. Fear of man. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso put that his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Your safety can never be in fear of man. Move for me. Hatred. This is where many of you are going to get yourself in trouble. Hot and unforgiveness that makes obeying God difficult. God say, hug your brother. I cannot hug him after what he did to me. God say, pay your sister's school fees. I cannot pay Ah, after what she did to me. You are being disobedient out of hatred. Out of hurt. Hurt can yield unforgiveness and can yield what? Disobedience. The sin of hatred. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespass. God is watching you. Six, worldliness. Worldly attachment that makes obeying God difficult. Some of you are so attached to things. You are so attached. Hey, my old boys association meeting is coming up this Sunday, so I can't attend HOP meeting. Hey, my, my friend has a party, so I can't come to church. Worldliness. Worldly attachment that makes obeying God difficult. Why do you disobey God? These are the things we are looking at. These are the seven things that make people disobey God. Go back again from number one. Why do you disobey God? Number one, because you are hopeless. Number two, Doubt. Number three. Rebellion. rebellion. Number four. Yeah. Fear of man. Number five. Yeah. Hatred. Yeah. Number six. Yeah. Worldliness. James chapter four verse four. Ye are adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that friendship of the world is what? Enmity with God. Friendship of the world. When you attach yourself, I must do this. I must go here. I must have this. Hey, there's an end of the year to go to the village. I must do You attach yourself to the world. You cannot hear the voice of God. You make musts for yourself based on what the world has said. You don't care about what God says. 
He said, I am a jealous God. You fear other people, you don't fear me. You love other people, you don't love me. You give to other people, you don't give to me. And you claim that I am your God. If I am your God, where is my fear? Give me scripture. If I'm your God, where's my fear? You only know God as Father. That's all you know. And because you only know him as Father, you only expect him to be a Father. Please, I want to remind you, he is a God. Not just a God. He's the God. Not just the God. He is the Creator. A son honored his Father. A servant his Master. If I be a Father, where's my honor? If I'm your master, where's my fear? Where's my fear? Where's fear? When, when last do you fear God? When I say, no, I don't want to offend God. I'm not going to do this. I don't want to offend God. I cannot go here. I don't want to offend God. I cannot touch this. When last do you fear God? When last was your action motivated by fear? Just imagine, I say, I cannot close church. What about all the offering? What about all the tithe? What about all the members? What if they go to another church? I cannot close church. Ah, no, 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 no. What will not happen to the ministry? What if people not leave? What if all worldwide close all churches, all branches, not to hold service? What about the income? What about all the things? What about the property money? What about nah, that's fear of man more than fear of God? You don't do that. When God speaks, you start, you stand to act. Take note of that. His son honored his father, his servant his master. Take note of that. If I be your father, where's my honor? And if I'm your master, where's my fear? Said the Lord of hosts to you. Oh, priest that despise my name. You despise my name. I'm going to teach you the priority of, God, of heaven. I'm going to teach you. We'll do that. When we get there, I'll show you all these things. What's the priority of heaven? You need to start seeing from the eyes of God and see things in a different perspective. Move for me. I feel sorry for those that will take this joke as like a joke. It will hit them before they will know. Take note of what he saying in James 4 4. Friendship of the world is what? Enmity of God. A man that is a friend of the world is automatically, you cannot be a friend of the world and a friend of God. It's not possible. You cannot be a friend of God and a friend of the world. God will set standards for you. Lord say, I don't like the way you are taking your offering. Ah, it saves time to pass the bow. I don't like the way, since then we, we come out. That's what's called fear of God. He tells you a thing you don't think. One day, I went somewhere over a couple of times to, to do a buffet with, with my family, breakfast. And one day, I heard a voice. I don't know what you are enjoying there. Huh? I don't know what you are enjoying there. Lord, it's... If I'm not able to eat after a while, if I go there, I eat and then just outing for my family, no answer. I don't know what you are enjoying there. That's the last day I entered that place today. I don't know what you are enjoying there. Ah, huh? Lord, explanation. He will not reply. You. He has finished. The rest will be in your conscience. I don't like the way you are taking your offering. Ah, huh? ah. Huh? When you don't obey, He will not speak to you. He must be saving me for something because I don't know why he said that. I've been going there, he has never complained. Just be with the family, have an outing, eat in a private space. Nobody is there with a loan in a private space. In a private space, nobody is there. When that word came, I don't know what you are enjoying there. And that was the end. To obey his voice. Number seven stubbornness. This is the worst. Stubbornness. This is the worst. Resisting again and again to disobedience. Resorting. That's what's supposed to be. Resorting again and again to what? Disobedience. After obeying. Starting and stopping. God will tell you this. You say, yes. You start. After two weeks, you stop. God says, your problem is that you're not praying. Yes, you start praying, then you stop. God says, your problem is that you're not faithful in your tithe. Oh, yes, Lord, you pay two times and you stop. God says, your problem is you don't always forgive. Yes, Lord, you forgive three times and you stop. That is the worst stubbornness. So now let's read 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. And Samuel said, Had the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. 
Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You say, oh, witch. You are a witch too. Rebellion is like a sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. You say, I serve the Lord God of heaven. God says, no, you don't serve me. You don't. You have another idol that you served. You are stubborn. You go two steps backwards. You start going to church, you stop again. You start giving, you stop. You start winning souls, you stop. You start praying, you stop. Every time God comes to correct you, you do it two times, three times, you stop. You are always stopping. You are a stubborn human being. He says rebellion is like witchcraft. Stubbornness is like idolatry. So at least a rebellious person is a witch. A stubborn person is what? Is a babalawo, full stop. What would babalawo do in heaven? It's simple. What's the difference between you and a babalawo? What's the difference? An idol worshiper. What's the difference between you and an idol worshiper? There's no difference. You are stubborn. You are exactly as an idol worshiper. And he says, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected you. That's the God we serve. So where are you? Start from number one. Give me the seven. Where are you? Which are you? Are you living your life in hopelessness? Where you cannot obey God because you, you don't believe it can work. Everything he shows you, you don't do. Because you say, ah, no, 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 it cannot. They will not. He cannot. It cannot. Are you living in doubt? Rebellion. Fear. Fear of man. Hatred. Hurts. Unforgiveness. Or worldliness. Or stubbornness. What is stopping you? from obeying God. The time has come. God is not going to take it. He's going to judge you. And the wrath of God will fall on you. Your proximity will not save you. Your anointing will not save you. Your office will not save you. Your title will not save you. Your ministry will not save you. It's coming. I stand as a prophet of God. Prophets don't only prophesy people's dates and details. They also speak the mind of God and they, they reveal the agenda of heaven. And that's what I'm doing as a prophet now. This is the time when God will judge. This is the time when God will judge and it will be bad. We're coming to the season of God's wrath. It's a time when you find yourself erring. Immediately you go and repent. Immediately. You don't wait. You don't say later. You lay down prostrate and repent before the Lord. And if necessary, you take an offering to the Lord. Lord, I bring what? A trespass offering. To show you that it's serious to me. You know what it's called? Fine. The government will fine you so that you become serious about your repentance. Just the way the government will fine you is the way trespass offering is a fine that you bring to the Lord to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I went to this place. I'm sorry. You told me not to go. I'm sorry. I, I did something that is wrong. I knew before you. I repent. I will not do it again. And I bring an, a trespass offering. And you bring it. To show that you are serious. Do it instantly. Because you don't know when the judgment will come. A man was planning. I will repent in the night. When I pray in the night. He died before his night prayer. I went to hell. After serving God all his life. After preaching the gospel all his life. He died with sin. Because he was planning to repent in night prayer. But he died before the prayer. Repentance doesn't have to be in prayer. It has to be constant. I was talking to someone. We were watching a movie. We were seeing a movie. And instantly the Lord convicted my heart. I said, excuse me. I went to the back of the chair. and knelt down and repented before the Lord and came back. And the person didn't know what I did. But right there, I quickly acted. Because you never can tell when the judgment will hit. Nebuchadnezzar didn't know. He was still talking and the voice fell from heaven. 
We're going for a 40 days of repentance beginning from the 1st of October to the 9th of November. 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. The Lord told me today. Remember I told you you are now in Nineveh. Nineveh repented in 40 days. So we're going to have morning prayers Monday to Thursday within these 40 days. And the morning prayer will be all about repentance. No breakthrough prayer, no deliverance prayer, no prophecy. The same thing on Sunday. Sundays we're going to close service with repentance. No prophecy, no healing, no deliverance, no casting out. You come to the altar and repent. The only means that is left to us now, the only means left to us for persuading men in this period is repentance. No deliverance, no healing, no prophecy until the judgment passes. After 40 days, then we shall be moving into a new era of God's power where what I've been telling you will become manifest, the visibility of God's power. But we'll go through these 40 days. Prepare yourself. Simple fast. It's not about the food. Fast till 12. Or as long as you want. Minimum 12. It's not about the food. It's about the heart. Rend your heart and not your garment. Stop fasting. And after fasting, you fornicate. Rend your heart and not your garment. It's not about leaving food alone. After leaving food, you are keeping malice, but you don't eat. But you are eating malice, but you don't eat food. But you eat malice. So what kind of fast are you fasting? The Lord is calling the church to a time of repentance. And this we will do in 40 days. I want to come to you every morning. Because we've not prayed this week. Because I didn't know what to do. I can't come and start shouting, Hey, breakthrough, may the Lord hear you. Oh, John, God is touching you. No, no, no. We are in a time of re- re- reverence of God. And I said, what should I do? The Lord said, they will even be more disobedient in silence. Speak to them that they may know the truth. So it's based on that word that I've come to do morning prayers with you. So all the prayer will be in a very solemn state. Prayer of repentance only. If you care to follow, follow. If you don't care, you'll be judged with the word. It's coming. A prophet of God will not only tell you the good, he will also tell you the bad. Let's talk to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.